Welcome back to the channel everyone. Uh, before we get into today's video, uh, I did want to cover a few things. Obviously, if you guys noticed, the channel name is different. I did change it on Thursday of this past week, I think. And uh, as you guys can tell, it is called Farm and Hammer now. Um, just a little backstory on that name. Uh, basically, ever since I started this channel, I wanted to come up with a name that, um, well, I really liked, and a name that, a name that I thought would really actually fit this channel, and uh, I never really came up with a catchy one, and so I kind of just named it on the farm back in the day, and I thought that would work temporarily, and I finally came up with a new name, and I actually came up with that, I don't remember what, I, I think I was doing laundry, and I saw the Arm and Hammer symbol, and it just hit me farm and hammer so uh so that's where it came from and obviously there's farming videos on here and as many of you guys will remember i talked about doing some welding videos a long time ago and as you know those have not showed up yet so uh what happened to that is i did practice i started making some videos on welding and um I originally thought, hey, you know, I'm just a beginner, that's why things aren't going well, trying to weld, and uh, I tried for a long time, and I knew that I should have been doing better than I was, and so um, after a little advice from a much better welder than myself, uh, we're assuming the welder is kind of, well, I know it's old, but I didn't know it wasn't working properly, and so we said that's probably why your welds aren't turning out correctly and how they should, because the welder's not operating correctly. So, um, I do want to get into more welding. Uh, it just takes me buying a new welder and spending the money. So, uh, hopefully welding videos will be coming soon. Obviously, I'll have some little construction projects here on the farm, especially when I start adding animals. And so that's where the hammer part comes in, and I think you guys all enjoy those too. So, um, another thing, you will probably be seeing some trapping videos on this channel here soon. Um, it's actually trapping season right now, but it's also deer season, and I don't like being in the woods when there's a bunch of deer hunters out there. So, um, I'm going to be waiting until after deer season to set some traps, and, you know, I know not everyone's going to be into trapping videos, and I understand that. So if you don't want to watch trapping videos, just don't click on them. I'll still be posting a regular uh, farm video at the end of the week, as normal, and uh, any farmer knows you got to take care of predators, and that's no different here. Oh, as well as we're doing some water trapping for some people that are having issues with otters uh, wiping out their fish in their ponds and we're gonna be taking care of those as well so anyway yeah just kind of some housekeeping here at the beginning of the video but I just want to let you all know um, so you guys won't be surprised by trapping videos and hopefully some welding videos here soon but since I don't have a lot going on on the farm this week um, you know calves are growing we're gonna start working some of the fall calves uh, later this week but this week not much went on again and uh so i just thought i'd talk to you guys about uh farming and kind of the business aspect of it for any of you that want to get into bottle calves and anything like that so now about what the title of this video is about i don't have a lot going on, on the farm this week and so that's why i'm going to talk to you guys about kind of the business aspect of bottle calves and basically farming in general um as you saw from the title uh, yes, farmers are basically high-stakes gamblers. Uh, I don't know of very many farmers that don't have almost everything, almost all the money they have invested into their animals, into their farm, uh, something to that effect. And, you know, that's no different with me. I have, which obviously I'm not a full-time farmer. I'm definitely not a big-time farmer yet. And... But still, I have all my money, almost all my money, invested into these 40 calves here. And when I invested all my money in these, I'm hoping nothing goes wrong. I'm hoping I don't have a ton of sick calves. I'm hoping we don't have a drought. I'm hoping we don't have a flood. I'm hoping grass grows well. I'm hoping they have something to eat. And I'm hoping prices don't fall out from under me when I'm ready to sell them. A lot of chances and risk involved here, but you know, most farmers, this is how this is how life is. So obviously most farmers are price takers. Um, you know, when I take these to the sales barn, it doesn't matter what I think they're worth, the buyers are gonna pay me what they think they're worth. And once they buy them, I can't back out and say, yeah, it's not the price I wanted. I get what they wanna pay. And you know, it's different than most, most things anyone's selling. You know, if the seller doesn't wanna sell it for this, this price, they're not gonna sell it. And if they want to get a, 
higher price, they'll wait and sell it whenever someone will give them a higher price. But that's not how it works here. Once I take these to the sales barn, if the buyer thinks they're worth a dollar, I will be getting a dollar per pound on these guys. If the buyer thinks they're worth a dollar thirty, I'll be happy with that and I'll be getting a dollar thirty per pound. But I can have little influence on what the buyer will pay at the sales barn. Now, there are some things that I can do to increase the value and hope that they will give me a better price for doing these things. Um, and this is actually what a lot of stalker operations do. Um, they'll buy some poor looking calves. They will castrate them if they're not castrated. They'll dehorn them, they'll give them vaccines. And right then and there, the calf that they bought at 500 pounds for $1.20 a pound, after doing those things, which costs, you know, maybe eight bucks, eight bucks a head, they just increase the value on that calf by 10 to 25 cents, just by dehorning, castrating, and giving vaccines. Um, basically preconditioning, if you guys know what that is. So, um, so yeah, I can increase the value on these, hopefully. So yes, they've had all their vaccines, they've had multiple rounds. They've been, I guess, technically long time weaned, which will get me a better price. They've been dehorned, the three that had horns have been dehorned. And, you know, they're overall, they're healthy looking calves, they're not looking too poor. And, uh, uh, they found the grain. These guys are big whiners. I just gave them grain, but they still want more. Um, but yeah, I've done everything I possibly can to minimize, uh, the chance of getting a low price at the sale barn. I've done all the things, vaccinated, dehorned, castrated, and these are overall healthy looking calves. And they've been long time weaned, so that should help me out. But, once again, when I take these to the sales barn, if the buyer thinks they're worth much less than I think they are, I can't, I can't do anything about it. I gotta be a price taker. You know, that's why, that's why I don't ever recommend everyone getting into farming, because you're risking a lot of money. Uh, you're spending a lot of time. I spent countless hours working with these, and you know, I don't know how much my product is gonna bring, you know, which isn't a great business model for any business, not knowing what your product will sell for. Um, you know, but that's the world of farming, whether that's crops or cattle or sheep or whatever you're raising. So, um, yes, you could do, if you're selling meat, you know, that's a different ball game. You can sell meat for what price you want per pound. If you're selling halves or quarters, you can get the price you want. But uh, when you're selling in bulk like this, you know, you're a price taker. You know, for those of you that remember the Holsteins that I raised, I don't know, I guess two years ago now. Um, those, I had 14 of them. I spent a lot of hours raising them. I invested some money, not nearly as much as in these. And then a year later, after I spent every day going out there feeding them every single day, um, you know, I barely profited a thousand dollars. And if you calculate that out, for all the hours I spent, I made less than a dollar an hour, basically. So, you know, most people would not consider that profitable. Not worth your time. I could have worked any any minimum wage job and made more money per hour than I was doing with calves. But um, I enjoy doing it and you know, hopefully this year these will bring more than those. So that brings me to my next point. I'd like to sell these guys here in the next month. I don't want to wait till January, which is what I was originally going to do. Um, I'd like to sell these guys in December and that means there's only two sale days in December, I believe, because of holidays and all that. Um, so I'll have two more opportunities to sell and I'm just gonna be selling steers for now. But the reason being, um, I don't wanna spend one more dime on these guys than I have to. And as soon as we run out of grass, uh, every bale of hay I feed is money right out of my pocket. They won't be gaining much on hay because it's not that high quality of hay. Um, and the higher quality of hay you feed, the more money you're out. So um, this is pretty low quality hay. Uh, well, probably average quality, it's just fescue hay, but I won't be feeding, I won't be feeding the combine stuff. But as you guys know, uh, I just got one pasture left with grass in it. And sure, it's been grazed kind of recently. There's there's quite a bit of grass out here. But the other issue with this field is, which is one reason why I hate Bermuda, you can see all this dried up, these dried up stems here. Um, you know, even when the calf is picking out these green leaves here, they're gonna be getting a mouthful of this too. First of all, they don't like this. Second of all, this makes their, you know, it's not very digestible for them, so their poop's gonna, their poop's gonna be, you know, eight inches thick and tall, uh, which means they're not getting high quality, they're 
they're not getting a high quality bite of food every time they take a bite. So um, this is kind of the last field I got to graze. And there is grass in here, but like I said, it's not, it's not the most, not the best pasture we've got. So, so with that being said, I'm selling these guys before I have to start feeding hay. And I'm hoping that'll be, I don't know, uh, finals will start early December. I may wait till mid late December till I start uh, picking which ones I'm going to sell. And I will be selling some heifers, the ones that didn't perform well. Any of the ones that are a little shrimpy, small, the ones that have pneumonia. So we'll probably be down to 15, 10 or 15 heifers, I'd say. Assuming, once again, assuming markets stay the same and assuming I'll get the price I'll get, um, ought to be a pretty good year for calves. So. So anyway guys, that's why I kinda, you know, farmers are basically gamblers. Uh, you don't have a lot of control of what you're gonna get and you're hoping your cards are, you're hoping you're dealt a good hand and you're hoping that you play your cards right. So, uh, <clears throat> once again, that's why I don't recommend this for everyone because you gotta be willing to lose a few times before you win. I don't know if some of the heifers are in heat or if steers are just playing around, but that's another thing. It's about time to throw a bull in with these heifers and the ones I'm keeping at least. So that's why I need to sell these steers off and need to go bull shopping. So I kind of think I have decided on the breed of a bull that I want to throw on these heifers. And it's just a matter of finding one. They're not the most common bull around. And so maybe Maybe a little bit of a drive till I find one, but yeah. <clears throat> so that's something to look forward to. Anyway, that's enough on, those are two steers. Um, anyway, that's enough on the calves. Uh, now I have to go move the big group of fall cows and give everyone some mineral. It's about that time of the day. And yeah, I'll kind of show you guys some of the older fall calves and all those. So anyway guys, yes, I was going to move the cows. Actually, I did move the cows, but uh, they didn't want mineral and they didn't want to move fields. So I uh, had to run them a little bit. They weren't cooperating. That's why my coat's off. Got a little warm there. Um, anyway, did get them moved. We'll be working them here soon in the next week. Uh, yes, I know this video was not very hands-on like the other ones and I didn't show much, but I um, hope you guys enjoyed the little tiny little business talk there. Um, if you were interested in bottle calves, like I said, nothing is nothing is set in stone. I okay, hope you guys enjoy this one and I hope you guys enjoy the new name. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. With that being said, thank you for watching and I will see you all next time.